iPhone 13 Pro Max vs Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra Ultimate Camera Comparison. Let's go! What's good guys, you're watching No Limits on the channel. Before we get to the comparison, let me say that both smartphones have the latest firmware and the Galaxy S22 Ultra has the Exynos processor, which is better for photo and video. Let's start off with the photos and ultra-wide cameras. Let me say that they are very similar, but the S22 Ultra is a touch sharper. The main camera module is less noisy on the iPhone and a bit sharper. But Samsung also looks great. Now let's compare the 12 megapixel and 108 megapixel mode on the S22 Ultra. And as you can see, the S22 Ultra is sharper in this mode. But to be honest, we can see the difference only when we zoom in by 5 times. The 3x camera module on the iPhone has more noise and more noise reduction, whereas the 3x telephoto camera on the Samsung S22 Ultra has more contrast and saturation. iPhone doesn't have a 10x camera, so that is why it's 10x digital crop and as you can see it has a lot less detail and pretty much over sharpened. The 10x camera on the Samsung looks just great and detailed. Both smartphones feature macro capabilities and as you can see the iPhone has better colors overall but in terms of detail and sharpness they are pretty much identical. S22 Ultra has a magenta tint in the shadows which I don't like but it easily can be fixed in firmware update. Now let's have a look at the selfies and probably the neon sign in front of me just messed up with the colors. Let's have a look at the detail level. And as you can see the Samsung is sharp and you can see it especially well in my mustache. One more digital crop, 10x camera, it's blurry on the iPhone and the 10x is just great on the Samsung. Also you can have a look at 30x which is also very nice and 100x which can be used as a binocular right in your pocket. Great job Samsung. One X camera indoors produced more over sharpening on the iPhone and a lot more noise and the Samsung looks okay. Ultra wide lens also produces more noise on the iPhone and Samsung has more detail. Now let's get to the portrait mode as you can see we shot indoors but with the light so it's a pretty easy situation for both smartphones. I can see that the iPhone is less flat and it has more detail. You can have a look at his beard. By the way this guy is my friend and he's a happy old owner of Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And looking at Samsung, I can see that it's like a painting more of a, than a picture. On the 3x portrait mode camera, iPhone also has more detail, especially in the eyes. And the Samsung looks flat once again and more kind of cut out from the background, which I don't like. Now let's get to the nighttime shots. It was very dark to be honest and I shot handheld using my super duper rig. And as you can see, the ultra wide camera produces better sky color with the iPhone and it's less noisy. The Samsung looks over sharpened, but both shots look nice. With the main camera module, I see that the iPhone is a bit less noisy and the Samsung has very close results. The 3x camera, to my surprise, looks better on the iPhone. It's sharper and less denoised. The Samsung, on the other hand, has darker aperture and it makes it hard to get good results at night. The 10x digital crop from the iPhone is noisy and very over sharpened. I just hate this over sharpening in all smartphones. And the Samsung 10x looks soft to my eyes, but both look pretty bad. And Samsung is a touch better. And here comes the night selfie. I think the iPhone has worse white balance and the Samsung is sharper. You can see it especially good with my eyebrows. One more night mode 1x shot. We can see the sensor reflections very well on the iPhone, but overall the picture is cleaner. And with the Samsung we see a weird denoise on the sky, it's kind of raining, but it wasn't. And also we see more noise. And on this shot with the headlights we see the light streak from the iPhone and a big flare. The Samsung also does have a flare, but it's better and it's not that pronounced, but it's also not perfect in my opinion. Here comes the night portrait shot with the main camera module. We see no detail in dark areas on my friend's uh, coat and a very red skin on the iPhone. But on both cameras we do see a good separation and nice artificial bokeh. One more portrait with the main camera module and we see a gradient detach from the background on the iPhone, which is good. We can see it less bokeh in front and more bokeh towards the end of the picture, I mean further. 
but also we do see a strong flare on the iPhone and less noise reduction and more detail, especially in my friend's skin. On the Samsung we see a totally blurry background, which is unnatural to my eye. Plus, it's more noisy. Night Portrait with 3x lens is noisier on the iPhone, but both phones have a good separation from the background. And also on both smartphones we see so-so colors, but I would pick the S22 Ultra. And this is a very tough situation for a portrait shot. I do like the hand on the iPhone more because it's more natural, it's kind of more out of focus, and on the Samsung it's in focus for some reason it shouldn't be. Plus, the iPhone said goodbye to the ear during the first take, that is why we had to take another shot to make the ear stay in focus. And to be honest, the skin tones are very bad on both phones. So guys, we're moving on and now let's get to the video. 4K 30 with 1x camera looks sharper and a bit over sharpened to be honest on the iPhone and on the Samsung the text is unreadable here on the trash cans. And now let's have a look at the selfie camera and let's have a listen to the internal microphones. So guys, I think my composition is not the best, but you'll definitely hear me and you'll see the difference in selfie cameras on all uh, smartphones. One, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, mic check. And probably you'll see the dynamic range because of the sky and overall my skin and the image quality. As you heard guys, the iPhone has no noise reduction of sound and the Samsung is trying to push your voice to the first place, but occasionally it provides problems because as you've heard, it makes my voice sound kind of robotic and not natural. And in terms of image quality, the iPhone image is softer. The 4K60 is an easy win for the iPhone. The iPhone has the same image quality in all 4K modes, 4K60, 4K30, 25, 24, it's just the same. The Samsung, on the other hand, has noise reduction and high over sharpening and overall the 4K60 looks more like 1080p to my eye. 4K 30fps with ultra-wide camera stabilization both look good and I'm impressed, but maybe it's because of my rig, the iPhone is a little shakier, but both provide great results. The 4K30 with 3x camera is shakier on the iPhone and has more stabilization artifacts and ghosting and 4K30 3x on the Samsung looks sharper and overall pretty good. Also you can turn on additional image stabilization or super smooth mode on the Samsung but it's only working in 1080p and on the iPhone it's working all the time. It's always steady no matter which resolution you pick. And to be honest the 1080p with a huge crop is just horrible on the Samsung. I don't like the image quality, it's highly over sharpened and it has a lot of artificial stabilization artifacts. Now let's get to the comparison of 4K on the iPhone versus 8K 24 frames per second only on the S22 Ultra. iPhone looks good without pixel peeping, but when we zoom in 5 times we do see that the 8K is sharper and it's better than on the Samsung S21 Ultra. But also it has worse stabilization in 8K. And by the way, it crops in a lot when you're using 8K on the Samsung. For some reason, the time lapses are only 1080p on the iPhone in 2022. I'm not sure why aren't you doing the 4K time lapses. And the Samsung does have 4K time lapse, which is sharper and better, as you can see right here. The slow motion, both in super slow motion and the regular slow motion, is better on the iPhone. It's much more crisp and sharper and overall better. The Samsung has soft, lower resolution, it's over sharpened and it has crushed shadows, so for slow motion the iPhone is better. But Samsung has two great features which iPhone doesn't have. The first one is auto framing and it's kind of like a center stage feature on the Apple devices. And as you can see the camera decides which zoom to make, well, you can move around a little bit and it's a great addition if you want to film yourself on a tripod and have a little bit of motion in your shots. And the second one is picture-in-picture -picture mode. And also both Samsungs have 
the cinematic mode or something which is basically the picture in picture you can choose any camera and shoot with the selfie camera as well and it's a great addition you can download a third-party app for your iPhone for it but it's not built in thumbs up for it for Samsung now let's have a look at the cinematic mode with the main camera sensor. On the iPhone it looks like it has better resolution but it's only 1080p. But it has worse separation, a lot of haloing around the head and the ears. But don't forget that you can play around with focus and with blur in post with the iPhone. And you cannot do it afterwards with the Samsung, you can only set it before you start shooting. So the Samsung looks more shaky and also it blurred out the legs of my friend which is unnatural. Cinematic mode with 3x camera has even blurrier separation which is not good so I suggest using lower f-stops and I have a full video about cinematic mode on the iPhone, I'll leave a link down below. You can get some awesome results with this mode. And with portrait video in 3x we see a shaky image but pretty nice separation. I'm really satisfied it's much better than on the S21 Ultra. And now let's have a look at the colors of both smartphones and I can say that they are very very close. Maybe it's a little bit more contrasty with the Samsung. And of course the Samsung is winning in terms of digital zoom and actual zoom as you can see right here. So the Samsung wins hands down. On the ultra wide camera in 4K we see less over sharpening with the iPhone. But on the Samsung it's pretty over sharpened to my eye. And the main camera module in 4K indoors is looking almost the same. Maybe it's a bit less noisy on the iPhone, but it's almost identical. So here comes the nighttime videography 4K30. iPhone 13 Pro Max has a lot more flares and sensor reflections and they are so bad, I just hate those. And the Samsung on the other hand has weird stabilization issues and as you can see it was out of focus for some time for no reason. So I hope they will fix it with the firmware but overall I would prefer the picture of the iPhone because of this weird stabilization when the picture on the Samsung is kind of jumping all over the place. The ultra wide camera is a bad idea for shooting in low light and especially at night and as you can see also we have a lot more flares on the iPhone but both pictures suck to be honest. Use one X camera. The Samsung has more denoise and also it has less detail, it looks like a blurry mess all around. A lot of noise reduction and once again the stabilization artifacts. The 3X camera on the iPhone once again has more flares which is irritating, but it's sharper and it has less noise reduction. The Samsung has weird noise reduction once again, especially on the sky and also worse stabilization. The night selfie is overall darker on the iPhone and we can even see the crushed shadows. The Samsung has more noise and stronger flare, as you can see. Now let's check the 4K on the iPhone versus 8K on the Samsung and to my eye the 4K looks better, it has less noise reduction. So I suggest using 8K only in good lighting conditions. And here comes the 4K60 on the iPhone and 4K30 on the Samsung. As you can see we still see the sensor reflections on the iPhone but overall it looks better than the 4K30 on the Samsung. The 4K60 would look horrible on the Samsung during the night. We see a touch better sky color on the Samsung but the artifacts of stabilization are just horrible. So I'm not suggesting using the handheld and running all over the place with the Samsung at night. And here is the shot of the headlights, once again we see a strong flare and the darker auto exposure overall on the iPhone. The Samsung looks better in this case. 
So guys, the tests are over. One thing I have to mention is the price difference because 128 gigs of iPhone 13 Pro Max is $1,100 and 128 gigs Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is $1,200. So it's $100 more. Keep that in mind. And now the conclusion. I did like the portrait shots more on the iPhone during the daylight and also during the night portrait shots, but just a little bit. The Samsung, on the other hand, has 108 megapixels, which is better for the stills, also better 3x camera and better 10x camera. So I think S22 Ultra is overall better photo camera. And don't forget that we get better selfies with the Samsung, especially in photos and in video as well. 4K60 is a clear winner on the iPhone and also the 4K30 looks more detailed as you remember. But Samsung has 8K, which is sharper, but it can only be used during the daylight. iPhone has better slow motion, hands down, but the Samsung has better time lapses. iPhone has gross flaring and unfortunately it's a big problem. The Samsung is winning in this term once again. But to be honest, the iPhone is better in low light video. Also, Samsung does have auto framing and picture in picture mode, which is a great addition. But the iPhone has overall better stabilization, especially at night without artifacts and more freedom with cinematic mode. So overall, if Apple fixes the flaring issue and the sensor reflections, it will be almost perfect for video. And the S22 Ultra has better photo capabilities in many aspects. Video is okay, and especially if the flares are non-existent almost and the reflections of the sensor, but I would still pick the iPhone for video. So my suggestion is, for video, take the iPhone still, and I hope that 14 Pro Max won't have those flares, and for photos, you can pick the Samsung, you'll be glad. So guys, what are your thoughts about those two smartphones? Please share them in the comment section below. I do have a lot of comparisons with the 13 Pro Max and S21 Ultra and the 12 Pro Max and S21 Ultra, so check out the links in the description. And if you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons. My name is Oleg Nikitin, no limits on channel. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next, and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.